This video is a continuation of my door and window tagging video. In this case, I'm going to go through door and window scheduling. I typically, you want to start with your tags so that you can get the data assigned to your doors and windows. And then when you do your schedule, it'll be mostly filled in automatically. If you do decide that you need to update the data, that's not a problem because the schedules can be updated on the fly. And that's kind of the beauty of using the automatic scheduling process rather than manually created schedules or tables, which are kind of uh, more of the old fashioned ways. So I'm picking up where I left off with this kind of cheesy small floor plan just to show you an example where I already have the tags inserted for the doors and windows. And then um, the numbers are assigned to the door and window objects. I don't have all the other data applied yet to the doors and windows, but like I said, I can do that after I create the schedule in order to show you how the schedule can be updated. So in order to pull my schedules in, I'm going to go to the annotate tab on the ribbon. You can use your document category of tool palettes as well, where you have the scheduling tab. So you have door schedule and window schedule there or again on the annotate tab, door schedule and window schedule. And again, I'm going to use the one that does not say project based because that's meant for a different type of file structure. So I'm going to just hit door schedule. But prior to doing this, you do want to have your annotation scale set. It may, might seem somewhat counterintuitive in this case because a schedule is rather scaleless. It's not a drawing. It's just a table of information. But the point of setting the annotation scale for the schedule is that you'll know what viewport scale it needs to be at so that the text height will be clear and consistent with your other drawings. Usually what I suggest is that you use the same scale as your tags on the plan so that you can remember what the scale is when you make your viewport. You won't have any questions about that. When I did my tags on the plan, I was using a quarter inch per foot so that the that would be my assumed viewport scale for the plan. And then the tags will be the right size. So I'm going to leave my annotation scale at that so that when I do the schedule, my text size will be consistent. So I can do my door schedule now. The first question it asks you after it loads is select objects. So in this case, it's asking you to select which doors are to be included in the schedule. If you're doing all the doors in the entire plan, I could just put a window around the whole plan. And basically that's a quick way. If I grab additional objects like walls and windows, that's not a big deal because it will filter those out. So that's a quick option to select all your doors. You may not want to do that if it's an existing project because you may have um, new doors that are in the scope of work and existing doors that are not in the scope of work, in which case you would not want to include the existing doors in your schedule to clarify that those are not in the scope of work. So then you would have to either do carefully selected windows or click on the doors manually, etc. You also have the option to schedule an external drawing, which allows you to work with external references. So you could um, hit enter in order to do that. Or if you had your XREF here right in front of you, you could just select the XREF plan and then that would schedule the doors that are in that XREF plan. The option to hit enter allows you to schedule an external drawing even if it's not an extra. So in my case, I'm going to put a window around all the plan because I need to schedule all the doors that are here. When I'm done with that, I need to move on to the next step. So I'm going to hit enter. And now it asks for the upper left corner of the table. So I'll click where I want to place that. So rather than clicking a corner for the size of the table, because that would determine the size rather than using my annotation scale, I would just hit enter and then that will size it according to your annotation scale. So again, start your tool, select your doors, hit enter, click for the first corner, but hit enter for the other corner. And then that sizes it according to the annotation scale. So here's your default schedule. It always takes some tweaking. For example, my number column has dropped off. I may want to change the font. I may want to take out some columns, add some columns. So uh, let's talk about how to modify the schedule now. If you select your schedule, it is uh, an intelligent schedule table object. If you were to change the data in any of your doors, you can select your schedule and hit update in the ribbon, and then that will update it. If you see a diagonal line across the schedule, then it's um, telling you that it needs to be updated. 
So then you would select and hit update. You also can right click and get to your update option there as well. <clears throat> if you want to edit the formatting of the schedule, then you edit the schedules style. So that obviously allows you to have multiple schedules and then all the schedules would update that are part of that style. For example, you might have a schedule for first floor doors and a schedule for second floor doors. And it's easy to control the formatting of both at the same time. So I can select my schedule and go to edit style. And you have a bunch of columns here uh, that have different information uh, that are important that we talk about. Uh, under default format, you have your text style for the basic text of the schedule. And I always change this to correspond with my other text in the drawing, which is the annotative style. Alternatively, you could also edit the text styles font in your text style manager if you wanted to do it that way. So now when I hit OK, you can see that it has updated to be my Arial text font rather than the uh, Roman S one. Let me go back to edit again here. And that should be fine for this tab. Applies to dictating what the schedule applies to, literally. So it's got doors and door and window assemblies checked off. That's fine. Columns uh, is literally which columns are in the schedule. So this is a very important tab. For example, my number column has dropped off that's supposed to list the door numbers. So I can go to the bottom and hit add column and then uh, choose my number property set data and then hit OK. And now I need to pull that column to be first in the schedule. So I clicked on my number heading and then I'm going to click and drag it to the left and then drop it and you can see how it slid it over. So I'm going to do that a couple more times. It's helpful to um, keep it up at the top rather than the bottom because if you put it down closer to the bottom of the headings, you can see I have like a do not enter sign. Basically, it's telling me I can't drop it there. So if you keep it up at the top of the headings, then it tends to work better because it's uh, picking up the overall headings rather than the subheadings. So now I have slid that all the way over to be my first column. <clears throat> I'm going to actually double click on this to take out the heading altogether. The reason is because I like to actually put an example door tag block in that heading so that it actually looks like the door tag. So then uh, that will represent that easily. Um, if you want to remove columns, let's say the louver columns, I may not need. Um, you can click on that and hit delete at the bottom and then hit OK. And then I need to take out the louver width and hit OK and the lure height. So that's the basic idea of adding, moving, and deleting columns. If you want to change any of the headings, you can just double click in the box and type in what you want that to be. You will notice that some of these say door objects and some of these say door styles for the property set row. And that's your hint as far as where you enter the data in the doors. Remember when I did the door tags, I talked about how some of the information is coming from individual door objects where you go to the properties palette. Some of the information is coming from the door style setup. So that's your um, little hint. If you're having trouble getting the right information to show, it tells you right here which one is by object and which one is by style. So moving on to the sorting tab, since I had to re-add the number column, I would normally want my doors to all be sorted by number. So I need to add that back here as well. So I can hit add and then find my door object number property set data right there and then hit OK. And then now that will sort my doors numerically in the schedule. Um, the only other thing that you might want to look at uh, is specific uh, controls for the width of some of the headings. Let me show you kind of what I'm talking about. I'm going to hit OK on this for now. And there's my number column. Now, if I try to fit a uh, door tag in this box, it's too narrow. The width of all these boxes is determined right now by the widest thing. It's kind of automatically sizing the width. So as you type more information in some of these, the, col the columns can grow depending on um, however wide it needs to be to accommodate what you add. So that's kind of good. It's kind of bad. It's good because it'll, you'll make sure everything fits, but 
it's bad if you want to have a very consistent schedule format because some are going to be wider than others. So you can manually determine the width, and that's what I'm going to do for this first column in order to have space for my door tag to go in the heading box. So I'm going to edit my schedule one more time. And I can go back to my columns tab, click on my column that I want to modify, and then hit modify at the bottom. And then I'm going to go to override cell format. And then you have a fixed width box. So that is set to zero, which will automatically assign the width based upon whatever's trying to fit into the box. Um, and I'm going to try one inch for my width and see how that looks. So now I can hit OK. I could do that in override cell or override header format, either one, because it's going to expand both when you do the other. So now I can hit OK again and OK. And that's probably a little wider than it needed to be. Um, I could have maybe done three quarters of an inch and that would be sufficient. So let me update that one more time. This always takes a little trial and error at times. So let's do this at three quarters. Yeah, that looks a little bit better for my uh, box for my tag. So now I'm going to copy this tag over and then explode it once because that reverts it back to, actually I'll explode it twice, and that reverts it back to a standard block with an attribute. So I can put the number sign in it and then put it into my box. So now if I want to make this centered, I can do a quick diagonal line and then put this in the center of my box there. So now it represents my door tag um, and it's easy to relate back to the plan. So that's the basic idea of doing your door and frame schedule. Again, um, if you want to update your information, for example, I have these set as wood. Uh, perhaps I want this one because it's exterior to be a different material. I can select that door, go to edit style, because again, that was getting pulled from the door style information. Waiting for that to load. And then now we go to property sets and then I can enter my material here. So maybe that's aluminum clad wood, something like that for my material on the exterior double door. Hit OK and hit OK. And then again, there's that diagonal line. So that's telling you that you need to refresh the schedule. So you can select it and hit update, and then it updates with that information of the material. So again, that's tied to the style. So if I had double doors that were being used for the interior, then I would not want them to be the same style as the double door that I'm using for the exterior if I want the material to show up differently in the schedule. So you have to think about controlling your doors in a way that makes sense for that. So an easy fix is to select that door and then use the copy style button in your ribbon and then that makes a copy of the style so you can set one up as a wood material and one up as some other material and then uh, it'll apply accordingly in your schedule. Uh, copy style again is in the ribbon or you can right click and go to copy door style and assign. So now I have a second version and I can rename this other one as interior let's say and then I'll hit the property sets and change this one to a wood material. So now I have two identical styles, but they're different in terms of the data that's assigned. So when I fill, so when I apply them to the schedule, uh, it'll make sense uh, based upon how I want that uh, door to show up in the schedule. Now this one changed to the new style when I did that, so I need to change it back to the exterior because when you do the copy door style and assign the one that you have selected gets put on the new style, not the old style. The window schedule works essentially the same way. You have your window schedule button on the ribbon or the tool palette, and then you select your windows. Click to place your corner and enter for the other corner. And then there are your windows. Now I forgot to include the number one windows. With either of these schedules, you can go back and add additional data. You can see in the top, you have the option to remove so scheduled objects or add scheduled objects. So if I need to add, I select my schedule, go to add. I can pick additional windows because I didn't include them all the first time. So now you can see there's my number one and my number two. 
So you generally would go through the same process of editing this schedule table style, uh, changing your text style to be correct, um, columns if you needed to add some or remove some, the same process. The one thing that is different for Windows normally, if you uh, listen to my tagging video, Windows are often uh, grouped together to, to where if they're identical in terms of material, size, and construction, um, they would show up as one number and one line in your schedule. So then these ones could be combined into one row, and the twos could be combined into one row. And that's why that these have the same number here on the tags. Those two are both twos and those two are both ones. So windows and doors are not necessarily scheduled exactly the same way in that regard. The way we can do this on the schedule, I'm going to go back to edit style, is at the bottom of your columns tab, if you include a quantity column, that tells AutoCAD architecture that you want to merge those together. So now I can hit OK, and you can see how it's merged it together to where there's only one row that says Mark 1 and one row that says Mark 2. Now, I don't necessarily want a quantity column, so I'm going to update this one more time, but I can also hide any column I want. I can select that column and go to Modify, and then check the Hide box, and that'll keep the uh, rows merged together, but hide the column. So you can hit OK and OK, and now I have that window schedule set up the way it should be um, for how windows are normally scheduled in a project. You have the same idea of applying your type and your material. If you look at your columns here, you can see that both of those come from the window style, and that's normally how you'd want it because you're not going to have uh, two similar windows, one of them aluminum and one of them vinyl on the same project normally. So that comes from the style. So that's pretty much it for doing your scheduling. Now the only thing that I really need to add to that is if you're in the field, it's very common that you want to uh, add custom columns to the schedule. Because if you look at the columns that are available to you, it's not an infinite list. When I go to add column, you know, there's only certain things that show up here. In the field, it's very common for firms that want to make their own column that has a custom label and everything else. I will do a additional video down the road of custom property set data and how you can do that, but uh, it's a little too deep for the time that I have in this one.